Hi everyone, and thank you for watching. I am Dandy Crossley, and I want to tell you a little bit about the community that we're building. It's going to be called, well, it may not be called that, but this is us, Texas is what we called it. Um, we know that it takes a village to raise a family. It takes a village to take care of an elderly person. And we want to solve some of those problems. We want to help people with their housing, their food shortages, good quality food. We want to help with all that as well as employment. So let me go through my deck so I can explain to you because sometimes it's better to see it than to hear it. So one of the problems that we have is loneliness for people that are of a certain age. I know my mother-in-law lives with us and she spends the majority of her time in her room and then she comes to the kitchen and then she goes back to her room. But there's really not a lot of interaction if we're not in the kitchen, you know, we're not in her room with her. So a lot of people have a lot of loneliness at this age. Affordable and functional homes that have the potential to generate income. There's not a lot of that around either. Affordable homes for the working class, mental health issues in all age groups. It's not enough community pioneers. Safety and security is a concern. I've talked to a lot of elderly people and they're concerned about their safety and security. Not enough dense, healthy food options. And for the most part over here in the United States, village living doesn't exist anymore. The solution. Develop a neighborhood of homes built from prefabricated or 3D printed materials. It could be a combination of barn dominiums, shipping containers, tiny homes, boxables. Um, the list goes on and on. They're getting so creative in their home building products. We can also offer affordable housing with the emphasis on community living. Have a common house for connections and entertainment. Some of us like to have fish fries on Friday and um, maybe soul food Sunday, poetry night on Saturday night with some live music, things like that. Um, all the properties will be fitted with solar and batteries so it can create a, and store energy. And so we virtually have a community that's a virtual power plant or VPP. We're gonna bring in value appreciation built into the foundation of the physical space. Build an incubator for the children and grandchildren of the property owners. Majority of the property owners will probably be people of a certain age who have children and grandchildren and they can kind of show them or teach them what they know before they die. We're all gonna die. So we need to give that knowledge to the younger generation. And a lot of people, as they get older, they feel invisible, like nobody cares what they say. And we want to create a community where their knowledge and information is, is valued. Um, educate on real estate. I'm a realtor. I've been a realtor for five years. I've been an investor longer than that. Um, and I also do loans. So I can help with community development. Uh, we can teach about science, technology, math, and other trades and engineering, and then grow community garden using modern technology. We won't be putting the hole in the ground and you know, doing the soil. We'll do something like the hydroponics where it's less space in a greenhouse, more nutrients and organic. And then some of the homes we can rent out and then we can also offer an event space or a retreat center. So I envision it also to be kind of luxurious. So I want to have a swimming pool and a tennis court there. So my vision, it can be a getaway for members and owners. We can have an internal banking system so that we help each other out. We're our own banks. We don't have to go to the big box banks when we need something. We lend to each other. We all have trust. Uh, we can do some land banking for future generations, our children and grandchildren. It could be a community resort style amenities, such as a spa, a yoga studio, beauty shop, things we all need. I don't go often, but I do get trim, you know. <laughs> Going to have a pool. Uh, we can have camping and glamping. We can have some RVs that come. We can have weekends where we host RVs, or we can have weekend where we have camping for the community or, you know, it could be anything we want like that. 
My husband is a cigar smoker. We definitely have to have a cigar lounge. <laughs> and I'm a wine drinker. So we definitely have to have a wine bar. And we can even have an on-staff chef. So this chef could also purchase one of the buildings that we're going to build and live there. He can, he or she can also work outside the community, but this could be a way of giving back and it could be compensated. We have to work all that out. We, don't, we haven't got to those nitty gritty details yet. It's definitely going to have an EV charging station for Teslas, Tesla specifically because we drive Tesla. Um, we're also going to be teaching financial literacy to every member. We'll have solar roofs on every home, probably test the roofs. And we also can have co-housing facilities for seniors, like a senior living facility. And of course, we're going to build it so it can be built the way we want it to be and flow the way we want it to go. We don't have to get someone's house that we try to make into a senior living facility. Oh, sorry about that. And of course, it's not going to just be for seniors because seniors have grandchildren and great grandchildren. So if the person can afford to live there, we'll have multi generational living. I know I don't want to live in a community with all older people. I like being around younger people because they give me life. It makes me think that, you know, I can, they still like having me around and I still like to hang around with them. So our homes will be starting at about 150,000. Uh, we'll have a variety of pre-approved builders that you can pick from. And of course, if you have your own, you have a certain design and idea that you want, that's possible as well. At this point, anything is possible. We can think it, we can do it. And we also want to have a commercial section for business owners. We want to have a trucking uh, facility there. We want to teach people about trucking. And for our guests, there could be a guest in in the community. That doesn't have to be a big you know, hotel, but it could be 10 rooms, five rooms, have to be rented out. But that could be income for the property as well. And then if you have guests that come, if you're in a small home, a tiny home or RV, and you want some other people there, they stay at the end. Room at the end. So as I mentioned, we'll be growing um, vegetables and fruits, organic. And these are just some drawings that I found on the internet of some small homes that can be put in communities. So this one here is a 3D printed home. This is like a townhouse. This is a tiny home with a, a roof, rooftop. And then we have rows here of just tiny homes. So I actually saw these in Austin, Texas. It's a whole community of small homes like that. Again, this is just another drawing that I pulled off the internet. This is no way what ours will look like, but it's just a, a rendering. So there's a common house here. This one has um, guest bedrooms, playroom, solar, has a meeting space, community workshop. We probably put the cigar lounge here. I vision the swimming pool and the tennis courts, mm, you know, somewhere around here. Uh, they got community heating. Mm, not sure what that's about. <laughs> Um, and of course, we'd have a shared car uh, for those who don't have cars. We'll have transportation service because we also want this to be in at least 30 minutes away from uh, metro, the metro area. We kind of want to be out by ourselves. So market validation, solving the needs for affordable housing, especially for the elderly. Uh, population expansion in Houston is booming. There is what they call the Southern migration. The inflation, the way prices are going up, families are seeking lower cost of living. And I, I don't know how some of these people are gonna be living in a few years because they're just getting priced out of even rentals. But if we can give them an affordable room as a bedroom, a bathroom, a living room, and if it's just you, what else do you need? You come outside and live. 
So we encourage blended families, multi-generational living, shared economy. Everybody doesn't need a lawnmower. Everybody moves there, sell your lawnmower, we'll have somebody else cut your grass. Village living, we share things. Uh, we come together and help each other out. Um, co-housing and cooperatives is another, another word for it. So I have attended a co-housing class. Um, it was a six week course on co-housing. So um, those are some things that I'm really interested in. Let's see what's next. Market size. Lowering the cost equal double the market size. What the market thinks is you want versus what you can actually afford. So me being a realtor, there are a lot of people that come to me and say they want to get a house and they can afford a $275,000 house. Well, once you look at the expenses and the interest rate and taxes and HOA and all of that, they really can only afford a $200,000 house. So that dream of having this big house is gone. So this is a way of um, giving you alternatives. Everyone is not gonna to wanna to live like this, it's fine, but there are some of us that do. So I've looked at some of the uh, modular 3D printed homes and boxables. Right now they're like $45,000. After you install them, they're about $150,000. These types of homes are modern, sustainable, they're not stick built and they're faster to put up. So we still have to look at the cost of the material and the cost of the labor with it and the time that it takes to put in once they put this boxable home down, then they have to put in the, the plumbing and electrical and things like that. So, but about $150,000, you can have your own house. It's not gonna be a three, four bedroom, 4,000 square foot house. It may only be 900 or 600 square feet. So the products that we wanna have is a modular or 3D printed home, some town homes, some um, tiny homes. We want some commercial space within the community, community and we wanna have partnership revenue. So we can help some of these commercial places get up and going, of course, for revenue share because that's just what people do. We got to make money. We still want to travel. We still want to go places. And it's, it's a business. But we can help you with your business and make money as well. Everybody can. So we want these functional homes that create livable spaces for a smaller square footage. Energy creating homes is also supplement the cost of the home. We can have Airbnb owners. We can have revenue, rental revenue potential can be bed and breakfast, the sky's the limit. So some of the community amenities, these will be put in later after the homes are built and we're actually living there. A spa, retreat, yoga, Rikki, meditation. Oh, my dog decides he wants to bark. We can have glamping, fishing, swimming. Swimming pools definitely gonna be there mini golf, gun range, tennis courts, arts and music event. We can have a farmer's market for the things that we grow, an on-site chef, and on-site activity. So the tiny homes will be placed close together to facilitate, facilitate interaction. The common house will also be part of the community. And then personal care homes as we age in place. Um, can be developed and as well as hospice facilities. We can also put in a peer space to rent for certain events. So our business model will be crowdfunding. We're going to be seeking shareholders. We're looking for owners. We're looking for investors. And we're looking for members. So this would be the pool, tennis court, 
you know, maybe we'll have more than one tennis court. That's just one. We can have foot football. We're going to be eating healthy. So we can learn to be, live to be 100 years old. <laughs> the shooting range. Uh, this is just a picture of a tiny home. So the market adaption would be uh, Airbnb margins, camping, boxable homes, barn dominiums, shipping containers, 3D printed homes, 3D printed homes, townhomes. Community partner owners can have an energy partner. We want them to be functional and affordable. We know we have to look in the permitting, the financing, the building, and the monetizing. So this is a barn, barn dominium. This is called a yurt. These are glamorous camping tents on platforms that people pay a lot of money to go out under the sun well, the sun and the moon and the stars to be out in nature. And of course, this is a tiny home and um, entertainment. Competitive advantages, uh, lower material costs. We're going to install solar and batteries. We're going to have virtual power plant participation. We're going to have income from selling the energy. And it's going to be a village community kind of vibe. We all look out for each other. We take care of each other. There are a lot of people who don't have family. We'll be, we'll be your family. So lower cost of ownership. No energy costs. My son put that in there. I see how that works. <laughs> we'll have pre-owner occupants and be fully sustainable. So we're going to have a community by nature, and then we nurture each other. I was telling my daughter that I like this whole community thing because I like one dish meals. Like I like soup. I like gumbo. I like you know yeah to put it in a bowl and just eat it. I like that versus a plate of everything separate. So this is this is in me. So the competition co housing in Houston is very low risk. There's only one other co-housing organization that I'm aware of, and it is in Houston, and they've just forming. Well, they've been formed, but they're building. I think they're gonna have their first um, residents move in the first part of next year. So there are some glamping sites, and I guess I need to go and investigate them. So if anybody wants to go with me, let me know. We can have a, a glamping retreat. And then there are some cooperatives um, that are out there. But the, a lot of the co-housings are up north and they're in California. There's just not many here in, in the Houston, Texas area. So this came up by Sheila Westmoreland and myself. Sheila actually introduced me to the term co-housing and did some, uh, went to a conference and did some investigating on it and I liked the idea. So she would be considered one of the co-founders. And on the board of directors, we have Alavesta Brunley, who's a healthcare advisor, Andre Crosley, who's an energy specialist, Kirkland Crosley, who is a developer, builder, and security expert, who used to be on Chicago Police Department. <laughs> we have Angela Austin. She is an inspector and a pet advocate, because we will be pet friendly. Paula and Lee Ivy, Paula Arsenal, Lee Ivy. They are owners, uh, he's a CPA and they're both educators. Audrey and Nelson Turner are real estate investors. RJ Cooper is a nonprofit partner. He's a landowner and logistics expert. And Valeria Carter, she's project manager expert. Myron Wiley is a computer assisted Let's say, okay, Consider, computer assisted device expert and architect. Uh, Attorney Terry, um, we had been in consultation with Iron Bill Design to project manage 
Uh, of course, we have a retaining fee that we need to pay before we can actually say we employ them. So that will be coming up. And we're also looking for experts in the following areas to bring the vision forward. We need more architects. We need people that are into hydroponics. We need landscapers. We need chefs and cooks, health and wellness experts. If you can do some yoga and you like to be out in you know, nature, uh, if you have a spa, maybe a hydrotherapy spa or something like that that you could bring to the table or something that we haven't even thought of. There could be some other experts out there that we really need or that would benefit from an environment like this. Please let us know. Our financials. So depending on the size of the land purchase, now we did decide that we were gonna to try to be in Fort Bend County and the land there ranged from 259,000 for 11 acres to 5,015,000 for 19 acres. As of this recording, which is July 31st, 2023. So, you know, things change all the time. Uh, we do want to make our purchase by October 2023. And we want to have it complete by October 2026. So we're giving ourselves three years. So we are like hitting the ground running. We're not going to be about talking and let's do, we're going to talk and go, talk and go, and talk and go. So we expect the project to be about $13 million over three years. Again, we're going to be seeking funds from Cal crowd funders, investors, and owners. So if this is something that interests you, if you are a little bit curious about it, um, and we're all new here, so you're welcome to join us. You may have some expertise that we don't know about, or you may just want to get away and do something different. So our next steps are going to be established business entities for the founders, uh, conduct feasibility studies, there is a community that is being built in Fort Bend County that's similar to this. And I'm sure they've done a lot of feasibility studies. So I'm pretty sure out in Fort Bend County, what we're doing is, uh, is unique, but there's a great need for it. We're gonna be developing business plans for all of the owners who have a business. And we're gonna be doing some leadership and operational improvement training. Like I said, none of us have done this before, so we're gonna need some experts to come in and train us on how to do something like this or how to live together. And we're gonna be doing some strategic planning. So it sounds like a lot of work, but I'm up for the challenge. We've been holding exploratory meetings of potential members and owners. We started on June 15th, and we actually had some other meetings last year, but they weren't consistent. So now, because starting June 15th, we've been having weekly meetings on Tuesdays at one o'clock Central Standard Time. If this is something that you're interested in, send me an email and I can definitely um, put you on the list and give you the link to it. We're gonna start crowdfunding to purchase the land. We're gonna partner with nonprofits. I had a vision of giving away a tiny home. When I went to that tiny home village, and came back and saw people on the streets begging. It just, it was a light bulb. I'm like, you got to give away a tiny home. I'm a realtor. I'm looking for land. People have land. We can give them a tiny home and maybe they can put that tiny home on someone's land, pay that person, you know, $400 a month rent. Win win. All right. Our website is thisisustx.com because I have a feeling we're gonna do this is us in other states as well. The website is under construction. So if you go there now, well, depending on when you watch this, it's under construction as of today. And I do have a Facebook page called AgriHood Texas. Again, my name is Vanda Crossley and I look forward to talking with you and hopefully building something together.